Okay, so we are going to continue on our adventure of knitted huddle weaving. And this tutorial is to show you the hem stitch and the reason why you would use it. So I've already got the loom ready to go for the hem stitch. So what you want to do is you want to warp it up standard, tie it off, put in your sticks or your thick yarn, whatever you're going to be using, and work some rows because you need to have this under tension in order to do it. Your, when you start, make sure you leave a tail at the beginning that is three to four widths of your project. Is so, that what you're using to do the hem stitch? Is that why? Y yes, because I started with this yarn for okay. weaving, so I needed to leave now, you can tie on and use a different... Why? Yeah, if you forget. Oh, that would be me. <laughs> Otherwise, just remember to leave yourself yarn at the beginning so that you can do it. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull out that. Okay, so you have room to work. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, so I'm starting on the right-hand side and I'm going to go under and in between. So I tie all my stuff in fours, so this is gonna be really easy to see where I need to go. So I've got my tapestry needle under the four and wrap it around, okay? Then I'm gonna go back to the outside and come up three or four. This is personal preference, I'm gonna do three. And then you want to pull this in, have this up here, and pull it tight, as tight as you want it to be. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go down into the space directly below, come up, go around, and then again, and then up. And where you're going up is where you came up the first time. So you want to make sure that you are in the same warp space that you came through here. You're going to go up. And make sure that you go up the same number of threads. And so now it's going to get easy. So you go around, except to get caught on your loom and your stick. Okay, so we're going to go around. Come on, there we go. Okay. <laughs> you caught on the other side. Oh, always get caught. And then up three. So I'm going. Ah! Right. Oh, mistake. Hold on a minute. Okay, hold on. I'm going to switch sides here. Sure. Pardon well, I the jiggling this. of the video, friends. I want to try and get a really good angle. Sorry, as I bop her right in the head. Yep, she's got my head. Okay, so that was easy to take that out because I accidentally grabbed here. Oh, so you want to okay. go down the same space. Okay. Up three. Pull it through. All right, so I want you to do me a favor. When you are go under your next one like you're going to start. Okay, now pull that through. I'm just going to have her go really slow. Now when you go back to gonna, go up you go in the exact same space that you went okay and then you come over to here which is where i was at here yep. and then you go you count three threads up and come in above that thread yep okay and then you pull that snug yeah it's really weird because like you're and then you go straight down from where you were in. You're going to go into the same space. See, I always thought that was an angle. I think and that's where... Four. Your angle is when you go back around. Yep, I get that And then now. come back up. And as you can see, I'm using a bent tip tapestry hook. Is that needle. easier? It just makes it easier for me. Okay. So you're going to go under four back across those same four threads and then come underneath and up into that third because I'm using three. Now, do you always use three? You can use whatever you want, whatever looks good for your project. You can do two, three, four, whatever works. And even here, 
you could just split this in half and do shorter and then you wouldn't have this big space in between. Okay. Where why, you so why would you like it? Are there it's just, is it for, preference only? It's preference and how you want your project to look. So if I would do this and then go up three and then I would do this and go up three, it gives it a totally different look. I'm going to zoom in on that real quick. So this is a shorter space as compared to over here, which is four threads. These are two. I see. Okay. So it's personal preference. Yep. How much bulk do you want? Are you going to turn this up and hem it on a sewing machine? You may want to take the time to do two. Okay. It just depends on what you want to do. But when you do this, it allows you when you're finished, um, you don't have to tie knots. You can just cut. And when you finish working your project all the way to the other end, you do the same thing. Leave yourself a tail of three to four widths of your project and hem stitch that back end. And then when you're done, all you got to do is cut your threads, unwind it. You can cut across here or undo the bows, whatever you want to do. And then you're done. That's the hem stitch. Okay. And then when you hem stitch, and you cut your cords. Mm -hmm. Like, is the hem stitch when you don't want to have fringe, right? Yep. Okay. And then after you do the hem stitch, do you come in and sew, like, fold a hem in your work, or can you just leave it? You can leave it, or you can fold it and finish it off with a neater edge. Okay. That was the whole point of the hem stitch. It makes it easier to turn it under. I was just and curious. And sew on your sewing machine. Okay. So that's the hem stitch. All right. Do you want to go across on no, that? No, because I have to take those out to okay. make it all the same. Well, I didn't know. <laughs> I was like... Because this is a... Um, what I have warped for is a uh, cover for a pillow. Okay. So I need to take that back. <laughs> all right. So there you go. All righty. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out. Ask. Please comment, share, like. Hopefully um, this helps with the understanding and if not just leave me a comment and i'll try to explain it better in words typed out or we can go back and we'll do it again absolutely okay absolutely. You guys have a great day bye, bye guys